Welcome back to Shark Week. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at some common shark misconceptions that many people, even to this day, still believe are true. Shark hysteria has long been a common occurrence in society and culture, with media and entertainment being leading perpetrators in these misconceptions. Films like Jaws or Sharknado have influenced culture heavily and made sharks out to be quite the villains. Improper science or outdated hypotheses have also led to many of these misconceptions, and many have actually hurt sharks and damaged their populations. So without further ado, here are five shark misconceptions that need to be corrected in order to save some sharks and alleviate some unnecessary shark fears. This first misconception is one that has been going around for decades. The thought that if a shark does not swim, it cannot get enough oxygenated water through its gills in order to respire and therefore will die because of it. Now there is actually truth to this. Many shark species will in fact die if they stop moving as they cannot get enough oxygen. These are sharks such as the Great White and the Mako. They have what is called a ram ventilator system where they have to swim at speeds with their mouths open in order to get enough oxygen through their gills. And if they don't, they will die. However, most sharks are not like this. Some sharks breathe through what is known as buccal pumping, where they use a muscle in their mouth called the buccal to pull water into their mouths and through their gills. Sharks that use this method are usually reef or bottom dwelling sharks that are largely inactive, such as the nurse shark. Some sharks actually possess the ability to use ram ventilators or buccal pumping. Sharks such as the tiger shark can switch between these two systems depending upon what activity they are doing. So there is truth to this misconception, but not all sharks will die if they stop swimming, only some of them. This misconception is a particularly dangerous one to sharks and people. The idea is that sharks cannot get cancer due to their very strong immune systems, and though it is true sharks do see a relatively low rate of cancer deaths compared to other marine animals such as whales, they do still get cancer and will die from it. The presence of malignant tumours on sharks has been known about for decades and decades, so why is this misconception still a popular one? Though the small element of truth that sharks see lower rates of cancer undoubtedly adds to the misconception, the main thing keeping it alive is the alternative medicine industry. The myth is perpetuated by old medicine companies in order to sell alleged cures for cancer made of shark cartilage. There are sadly many, many companies out there hunting and killing and harvesting sharks simply to make fake cures for cancer, all because of the myth that sharks cannot get cancer. The thing that makes this myth even more absurd is the fact that even if sharks were immune to cancer, which they are not, consuming supplements and pills simply made out of shark would not have any effect on fighting cancer. That is why this misconception is so dangerous, as many people neglect proper medicines in favour of these supplements, which end up not only getting them killed, but it also contributes to the massive overfishing of sharks in our oceans, and especially in North America, where there has been an 80% decrease in shark populations in just the last decade. One of the most popular facts people usually quote about sharks is that they can detect a single drop of blood in the ocean from a kilometre away. This is however not entirely true. Sharks do have extraordinary olfactory systems that allow them to detect blood many kilometres away, but even the most well-developed and acute shark cannot detect a single drop of blood from so far away. At best, a shark can detect one part of blood per 10 billion, which may seem like a very acute sense of smell, however this equates to one drop of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool, which again is very impressive, but not when we consider that an Olympic-sized swimming pool is actually a lot smaller than the entire ocean, and nowhere near close to the supposed kilometre-wide radius. That being said, they can still detect blood from many kilometres away if there is a lot of blood, such as a whale bleeding out or a tonne of bait has been dumped into the ocean. But simply having a small cut on your knee won't cause much trouble unless you are deliberately jumping into shark-infested water. This myth, I honestly have no idea why anyone would believe. Apparently, some people think that if you cut a shark's fin off and dump it back into the sea, the shark will be fine and the fin will regrow. There is absolutely no inkling of truth to this myth. Sharks cannot regrow their fin, but sadly, many in the shark industry perpetuate this myth in order to justify their hunting practices. Many shark hunting boats will simply cut the shark fins off and dump the shark back into the ocean in order to be more efficient. However, these sharks will die when they are put back in the ocean. Without their fins, they cannot swim properly and they will bleed out, drown, or starve to death. 
Picture this classic situation. An Australian is lying on their surfboard off the coast of New South Wales, waiting for the next big wave, paddling along with their hands off the sides of the board and their feet in the water. Now, a great white shark comes along. It sees the silhouette of the surfer above it on the surface. It then swims up from below and takes a bite, thinking the poor Australian surfer is a seal. Except in reality, the shark really doesn't think the Aussie is a seal. In reality, the shark is simply curious. There is a common misconception that sharks think surfers are seals and will attack them due to the shape of the surfer's silhouette, but this is mostly false. In 76% of cases where sharks have taken a bite out of a surfboard, the damage inflicted is nowhere near what would be needed to kill a seal. If you look at the classic images of a great white shark attacking a seal, you will see it leaping out of the water with the seal in shreds in its mouth. If a shark really thought a surfer was a seal, then there wouldn't be any surfboard or surfer left to inspect the damage inflicted upon it. Really what the shark is doing when they bite a surfer or a surfboard is inspecting it because they know it's not a seal and they are curious what it actually is. So no, a surfer's silhouette is not mistaken for a seal by sharks. They are far too smart and far too powerful for that to happen. Those are five misconceptions about sharks that I feel need to be set straight. There are of course some others, but they are so simple to explain, I'll just do them quickly here. Sharks don't target humans or have some sort of lust for human flesh. They simply eat what is closest and easiest to digest that is near them when they are hungry. That doesn't mean they won't attack a human in order to feed if they are hungry, but the chance of it happening is ridiculously slim. Another quick and easy one is that supposedly, if there are porpoises around in the water, then it means there are no sharks. This again is false, as porpoises and sharks sometimes actually eat the same kinds of fish and therefore will live in proximity to each other. Thank you for watching this Shark Week video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.